Hi and welcome. This is our December video on Advent. So we're going to light the Advent wreath. <laughs> Lovely. If I can do this, okay. If you have an Advent wreath at home, there are certain prayers that you can say at mealtime that different people in each week and the as members of the family can light. It's kind of a fun tradition that admittedly I never did as a child <laughs> and I just learned about it really more last oh, year really? than anything else. No yes, which is bizarre. But I found it and I, we've been thrilled because it's just a lot of fun. So look it up online. Yeah. And some people just um, light the candle or candles every Sunday. So, you know, the, the first, second, third, fourth Sunday of Advent. Others light it every night. So we're in the first week of Advent. So, I mean, when my kids were little, we'd have the wreath out there. And at dinner time, you know, we'd light one candle for the first week, two for the second. You can figure it out. Um, but the thing was, everyone wanted to blow the candles out. <laughs> so, <laughs> All over the table. Yeah. yeah. So the trick was, can we get the prayer in <laughs> before whoever's turn it was blew it out? Nice. Because then the fighting, you know, I want to blow it out. But anyway. <laughs> so um, as parents, though, this can be a really stressful time, well, even without COVID, um, to... to use Advent as a time to prepare ourselves spiritually to celebrate Christmas because we tend to focus on all the other preparations, the co Christmas cookies, presents, wrapping, presents and, and all of that. And, <clears throat> and that can be overwhelming and sometimes you get to Christmas Day and you're just sick of it. Right. <laughs> you're tired of Christmas and that's really the opposite of the way we want to be. We want to be excited about Christmas and the reason that we're celebrating. So it may take some time for you to think of how you can um, reorient your time and, and your intention in doing things. But um, one of the things I like to do, especially during Advent, um, do you want to blow out that? No, don't blow out. Are you do it. That's right. I'll put my mask on first. In the morning, I'll take an extra amount of time, say 20 minutes, uh, half an hour, 15 minutes, whatever you have. Take a little extra time for yourself to pray in the morning. And, and I, I do light a candle to pray just because it's like a signal to me, to my body, to my brain, to my heart, that this time is different. Um, I don't do dishes, I don't do anything else. This is prayer time. And so lighting the candle for me is like a ritual saying, okay, it's prayer time. And if you, if you do that, if you just take an extra, even if it's five minutes. Yeah. It'll change your day. It will. It does. All of a sudden, it doesn't mean that everything's perfect, but at least for me, when, on the mornings when I take time, and it usually, for me, it has to be in the morning. I can do it at night, but I tend to fall asleep. Um, but if I get up in the morning before everybody else gets up, um, it's still dark usually, turn a light on, have a cup of coffee, and sit there in the quiet with God. Um, for me, it changes my day. It, it, the entire rest of the day is different yeah. um, and just more rightly ordered, I think. Um, not perfect, but <laughs> not perfect. <laughs> but so right. much better. Right. And I mean, you can you can certainly read from your Bible, read scripture, read sure. the readings of the day, sure. read some prayers that you have, or just have a cup of coffee with Jesus. Yeah. Like you know, just tell him what's going on. And, or, or write prayers, or write your intentions, or write down a list of all the people that you want to pray for. That's, that's one thing I like to do, just to remember all the people that I'm, I'm trying to remember to pray for. So take time for yourself. Be quiet. Um, you know, don't do anything else. And just give that five minutes or ten minutes to God. And, and it really does, it does carry on you. yes yeah. orient you um, grounds you centers you so that you can handle the rest of the day right. um, and that that is how we are supposed to be so um, in um, connection with God mm -hmm. throughout our day that that we're able to handle things so in Advent you know we talk about the coming uh, of Jesus at Christmas but in Advent there's actually two comings. Um, when we talk about Jesus being born at Christmas, that's the first coming of Jesus. There is a second coming. Right. 
maybe not as peaceful as the right. first. A little bit disruptive. So at the end of time, right. when Jesus comes in glory, um, that is the second coming of Jesus. And Advent is actually a time where we're preparing for both. We who live in the in-between times of the first coming and the second coming, um, we're actually remembering uh, or thinking about reflecting on both of those mm -hmm. comings of Jesus and um, being prepared right. for them. Right. And what we need to do in our souls that prepares us for, for both for being ready in our minds and our hearts for a baby Jesus to be born, albeit a couple millennia ago, but in our hearts, and then preparing for, for Christ to come again, um, which will either come at the end of time or for some of us who may pass away sooner, um, <laughs> it'll be sooner, right? I mean, the second coming is later, but we're gonna see him at some point, um, right? probably sooner than we want. <laughs> um, and, and the fact of the matter is that I think it's so important for us to spend time. This is a time to prepare our souls. Um, the quiet is important. We talk about, you know, quiet and prayer time um, because that's where we hear God the best, right? Um, when things, when the, the craziness dies down. Um, but it's also about cleansing our souls, right? We think a lot about Lent as a period of penitence and, and, um, it's a, and it's a sadder time because of the event that happens at the end, right before the resurrection. Um, but this is actually a similar time in the church. Purple is the color that is in the church. Purple is the color of penitence, just like it is in Lent. Um, and that's because it's time for us to reflect. It's a hopeful reflection. It's a, it's a reflection that we know um, we all have to meet God at some point. And are we ready? And so I actually... Um, you know, we're, we're all supposed to be doing this all the time, but, but it's, it is a time during the year in particular, as is Lent, when, when, it, when it brings to mind reconciliation, confession and confession. reconciliation, <laughs> confession. Um, and this is, this is a busier time, I would say, for that, and that is, that's a good thing. And that's because people, we're supposed to be stopping and preparing ourselves for that. And, and, and a big piece of that is preparing our souls and confessing. Um, and having that conversation with God in a in a in a face to face way, he looks like Father Brian, right <laughs> at that moment in time, but or whom, whichever priest. But it is so important, um, and I think is actually an enormously important part of being able to face the stresses of Advent mm -hmm. in the Christmas season is unloading a lot of the things that have built up. So if you haven't been to reconciliation lately. Um, this, do it, do it. There is no time like the present, and certainly bring your kids. Um, I will tell you, and 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 bring your kids, and go when your kids are there. If they can sit in the pews by themselves and they're big enough to go, right? And they've had their first reconciliation, and they can sit there quietly. Go and let them see you go. There is nothing wrong with your children knowing that you're a sinner because we all are. <laughs> we all need God's forgiveness. Um, but it's a beautiful way to celebrate this season is giving yourself the freedom, the peace that comes from true merciful forgiveness. Um, and we don't get it anywhere else. We can talk in our in prayer to God about how we are sorry. Um, I do that a lot. I have a lot to, to talk about with him from time to time. But, but it's important for us to go and have that true face-to-face -face because of the fact that we are sensory people. We experience things through senses. It is scarier for me to go and know that I have to sit down and say the words out loud to somebody than it is for me to say it in my head um, to God, even though it's the same. Right. So, But it's important to do it because the, that freedom, that forgiveness, we don't feel that the same way. Right. It's not given to us the same way, except through reconciliation. Yeah, we need to name it. We need to name yeah. our sins That's and right. admit it That's um, right. in, in order it, to grow. Right, and it's good that it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Because if you, didn't, if you didn't care about it, then it wouldn't be hard. That's right. Um, That's right. And if you're, if you're concerned about going to reconciliation during these COVID times, uh, and you don't want to go into the reconciliation room, you can call the office, call Father Brian. He'll meet you outside. He'll meet you in the parking lot. He'll meet you yeah. anywhere. He's yeah. tremendously available. Yeah. And um, we offer reconciliation every Saturday from 2.30 to 3.30. But you can always call and make an appointment almost any day of yes. the week. 
And um, on Wednesday evenings during Advent, during this time of preparation, Father Brian is also available for reconciliation. I'm not sure what time, but I'll put it in the email. Right. So, And maybe, Sandy, in the email, can you put two, uh, some directions about how to do confession again? Absolutely. For folks who haven't been in a while, it's right. a good reminder, and you can always bring the sheet in with you. Oh, absolutely. With an act of contrition and, yeah. and all of those things. Yeah, if you're rusty, don't let that stop no, you. <laughs> no, and uh, any priest understands that. All you have to say is, I'm rusty. Can you help right. me through this? And right. That's, they would be happy to. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So um, may you have a blessed and peaceful Advent season. Um, may you be more and more aware of the presence, not the presence under the tree, <laughs> but the presence of Jesus in your life and in your everyday comings and goings with your family and the people you love. Um, and may you feel that closeness with him, which he um, desires more than anything. God bless you.